Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. There is someone hanging around the Nexus that I almost forgot about. Astrava, who has a lot to say about Boletaria. Before the Blight, Boletaria was a grand kingdom. The king, his knights, and his subjects were modest and plain, but also steadfast and compassionate. I have spent much time in my studies in the cultured countries of the south. Yet no country holds my heart as does Boletaria. But look at what has become of us now. I refuse to believe that this is what Father wished for our great land. Here in Boletaria, we speak of the legend of the two swords and the solitary hero. The two swords are Demonbrandt and Soulbrandt. One sword banishes that which befouls man, and the other banishes man himself. The solitary hero is old King Doran. King Doran is the everlasting one, founder of Boletaria and protector of the two swords. <laughs> of course, only according to legend. But in the dark state of our land, sometimes legends are all we have. King Alant led Boletaria with a round table of the bravest knights. The noble twin fangs. Valifax and Bjorn, Alfred the Tower Knight, Metas the Penetrator, and the brave tribesman Longbow Ulan, and his fearsome legions. But today Boletaria is an abysmal mess. Valifax was lost, and Bjorn slipped through the fissure, never to be heard from again. All the rest, along with Boletaria, are either devoured by the fog or fallen afoul of the demons. The Boletarian knights are no longer. But perhaps our age will see the rise of new heroes, such as yourself. But perhaps our age will see... That is a lot of stuff that we will get back to uh, later. <gasps> <gasps> okay, okay. Oh my god, I thought she was dead. Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a lot of stuff that we're going to get back to at a later time because we aren't going back to Boletaria today. We're going back to World 2 to take on the Archdemon there. Hey, I killed the boss and immediately remembered there's a secondary missable trophy associated with him, which I missed. So I'm going to redo this. Thankfully, it's not that much of a chore to redo. It's a little bit temperamental. Temperamental is doing a, a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence, by the way. <laughs> And it's thanks to the fact that we are in pure white world tendency that up ahead we can hook left. Just after we take cover for a second, we're going to be a little bit careful. And once we do, okay, he's not looking, we can grab this big glowing sword, the Berserk Reference Smasher. And you can only get that on pure white world tendency. Which you might remember, I died twice in this world in body form. Once to the invader in the first level, once to the lava worms at the end of the second. Ordinarily, that would preclude me from picking that up. But I was able to get here in pure white thanks to <laughs> Achilles Sucker. From the community uh, who invaded me a couple of times so I could kill them and get the world tendency boost. Now as for the boss himself, before there was Bed of Chaos, there was Dragon God, our friend from the beginning who helpfully sent us to the Nexus. I think we might be getting the fist. Yeah, we'll survive it. Just as long as he doesn't keep it pressed there, we're fine, because otherwise it kind of leaves a lingering hitbox once you get up. But we're at the Ballistas, so... 
No big deal. And you could see that took out a little bit less than half of his health. It was about 45%. So now the phase repeats down here in these trenches. Uh, except instead of punishing us for getting caught with a huge punch, uh, this time if we get caught he's going to flood the trench with lava. And I compared him to Bed of Chaos, but to be fair, he is a lot more forgiving when he is temperamental. <laughs> uh, the whole goal here is just to take cover, wait for a new... Yeah, we're getting both of them. Good. Fantastic. That one didn't even knock me over. Um, yeah, we wait for him to look away dash out to hit whatever rubble's blocking the path, and pray that his AI doesn't just decide that you have been spotted. Usually when you are spotted or he gets alerted, you'll get uh, an audio cue in the form of a roar, and his eyes will go red. And then if you uh, stay in his field of view, he'll either do the punch or the fire breath. The only problem is, it's really hard to tell what his vision cone is like. There are times where you feel like you should be spotted, and you're totally fine, and you shouldn't be spotted, and he uh, punches you to death. I think he also might be alerted by sounds. Like the specifically the sound of your weapon on rubble. Uh, but the thief swing should also be really, really dulling his senses, too. Uh, that fire's fine, it's not gonna reach up here. It'll leave uh, the entire lower portion of the arena a molten swamp, but as long as we're up here with the other ballista, we're totally fine. I always wonder about who built these, because they seem, in their design, so much different from everything else in the game. Like, that looks so much more technologically advanced than anything else we've seen. Now we have access to the lowest depths of this shrine slash prison for the Dragon God. But before we go all the way down, uh, down there, we're going to come over here and grab the Master's Ring, which interacts with a an extremely specific and obscure weapon mechanic called Sweet Spots. Uh, for some weapon types, you have to hit with a specific part of the weapon to do full damage with it. Uh, like for the Mirrodin Hammer, it's everything above the shaft. The Master's Ring will boost the damage those sweet spot hits do. And now, all that remains of this Colossus, this Titan, this ancient god, is a broken husk waiting to be put out of its misery. And we're going to do that by equipping both the Hands of God. I don't have the strength to use either of them effectively. But I can I can throw some punches and some uppercuts with them. It'll be enough to slowly whittle him down. First, there is still... I guess you could still call it a little danger. The heat that he's expelling uh, does hurt, like you can see hurts quite a bit, but it comes out predictably. And you know what? While I do this, 
something I wanted to get back to with Flame Lurker actually ties back around to this. And it's in Flame Lurker's design. When he first got shown off, people, in the remake I mean, he, people were really not feeling the new design. Uh, and so it was tweaked based on their feedback. And the version that we have now is one that is still a little bit different, but it's closer to the original concept art. And more importantly, it looks fine. He looks fine. But there was an important detail missing before that's been changed. And it's something that actually hadn't occurred to me, and it's really cool. There's a detail that I am just now discovering about this. It's been known in the community, I guess, for a while, uh, but just hadn't struck me before. It's that Ed and Baldwin both wear glasses. An old Flame Lurker's design had that damaged eye, and it almost looked like he had the outline of a pair of glasses. So it's possible that whatever is happening to Ed and Baldwin, Flame Lurker is the end result of that. Uh, another common theory is that Baldwin and Ed are descendants of Big M, who is the person referenced in the description for the Fists of God. And then also that Big M himself became the Flame Lurker. Remember, they said he beat the shit out of dragons barehanded. That arena is littered with enormous dragon bones, and Flame Lurker fights you entirely barehanded. And also, Baldwin and Ed uh, drop one Hand of God each if you kill them. And I think I wrapped that point up just in time for the end of Dragon God. I'm surprised 48% of players have that. I'm surprised 48% of players have gotten this far. Usually completion stats are way lower than that. Uh, and now we're going to make our way back to the Nexus. I'm going to hit up Stockpile Thomas real quick so that we can dump some stuff off uh, and then do all the World Tendency events for World 2. I'm going to check the, the item description and the lore for the Dragon Mode Smasher that we picked up in the Dragon God Arena. Unequip and uh, stock those very heavy Fists of God. A blunt lump of iron that smashes foes, said to have been forged by the ancestors of the Stonefang miners to be utilized against the dragons, imbued with a spell to protect the wielder from fire, mocked by blacksmiths who snidely refer to it as a slab rather than a sword. Miracle derived from the soul of the dragon god, Demon creates an explosive field of force with the caster at its center. One of the greatest of all miracles, it symbolizes the power of God in opposition to the forces of evil and is an offer of aid to all who are moral and righteous. Let's see, this is going to take up two memory slots, which we have covered. We have three total. Okay, cool. We must Nothing new from Urbane, so we can move on. Okay, so we're back here at the pit in 2-2 that we used as a shortcut to get down to Flame Lurker faster. Remember there was an alcove that I pointed out. I said we'd be back for it later. Well, that's where we're going today. Because on Pure White World Tendency, there's going to be a new NPC to talk to. Someone who I believe was alluded to by either the merchant in this level... Or maybe it was Patches. Before we talk to Skerber, I'm going to do my best to juggle these two so neither... Oh, no! Okay, we're good. Good. No. Good. Good. Yeah, good. We're great. Good. <laughs> oh, there you go. You nearly frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. My name is Skerva. I seek treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. 
Were you guided by a sixth sense? Or just plain lucky? Either way, you're quite something. Shall we put your luck, or skill, to the test? Have you heard of the temple below? It is a work of art, molded by the ancient borrowers to appease the bones of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can crush the bones of drakes is stored in the temple. Truth told, it's the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say, <laughs> it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A dull blade, <laughs> meant to slay a dragon. <laughs> Curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I'm afraid I'd fare poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please, let me have a look at it. This place is incredible, eh? The bones of dragons exuding awe. A dream come true. Hey, well, you found it. Let me have a look. Scarver wants to see the Dragon Bone Smasher. Remember what happened last time. It. Let me have a look. It was Satsuki trying to kill us over the magic sword Makoto. And in this case, we have to equip it to actually show it to him. Uh, and it uses the greatsword moveset. Same moveset as the Moonlight Greatsword. Oh, wonderful. The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, don't mind me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Please take this as a small show of thanks. Take care of this one, will you? She's a stunner. Take care of this one. Oh, he didn't attack us. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna attack him. Skurver isn't useful anymore. Except, <clears throat> actually... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. What has happened? I don't have enough mana to cast that, do I? Clearly, I am the greatest fool. Oh, Jesus. Okay. We're doing this the hard way. Stop it. I'll come back to haunt you. He is not going to come back to haunt us. Look how weak he is. He, that was barely a scratch. Yeah, he's not coming back to haunt us. This is the one additional way he can be useful, though. He can get us closer to pure black with his death. We're actually really close to pure black world tendency right now. Uh, just from that kill and this death. It just hasn't updated yet. And now that we're at pure black, I can come back here. Remember this? It's near the start of 2-1. The elevator I said we'd be uh, taking again. So while we can, we'll enjoy that vista. And then enjoy this view of this large lad. Who's just chillin'? But we really like them colorless demon souls, so we have to interrupt the chill. And now the really messed up part is killing a primeval demon raises your world tendency a bunch. But there's still something else we have to do in pure black, so I have to run all the way from here back to uh, where we just were with Skurver. All right, we made it here in one piece. This time we're fighting Black Phantom Skurver. And right away he's going to try to cast Regeneration, which we will not allow him to do. We're not letting him get HP back because unlike Skurver in body form, uh, Black Phantom Skurver is spooky. He is strong as hell. <laughs> we hit him twice and barely scratched him. And then on top of that, 
he's got numerous offensive spells. Uh, he's got Fire Spray and Fireball, and then also in melee range, he has Ignite, which is just a shotgun blast of fire. And this is not going great. Uh, he does have limited mana, but I think that regenerates. Alright, this is the one. We're not fucking around anymore. <laughs> I just want to apply pressure. Uh, also, his sword will now hurt. Didn't hurt before, but... God help me if I get hit by it. Oh god, there it is. Yeah, there's quite a difference. There's a world of difference. Not to mention, not only is the Phantom itself stronger, remember, the game gets harder in a number of ways in pure black. Good lord, man. I guess he kind of did come back to haunt me, huh? <laughs> okay, now he's trying to run away so he can heal. Uh, this is very good there. That's a great opening. And now we're just going to not let him heal ever. I have to be careful about staying too close to him. Because he could still ignite. Nope, 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 nope. Get out of here with that bullshit. Talisman of Beasts. Oh, this is a fascinating item. This is one of my favorites for the implications of it. An old wooden amulet featuring a symbolic depiction of the old one can be used to cast both miracles and magic. What was considered a depiction of God was in fact an image of the old one portrayed as a force of feral chaos. It just comes out and says the thing. It comments so directly on this divide that we've seen throughout the game. Uh, and then on top of that, it scales evenly with faith and magic. Uh, it requires the same amount of both stats in order to uh, use it effectively. You can cast both miracles and magic with it. And um, it boosts magic damage, which the thing about this game is that Magic damage doesn't discriminate between damage done by miracles, because there's only one miracle that does damage, I guess, um, and damage from spells. It's the same thing all the way around. And we're going to leave it on that note. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.